But good morning. Our goal today is to get to Missoula in Montana. We're going to travel via the Bitterroot Valley, but before we get there, we've got more cool places to stop at, which we hope will be open. First is Bannock, which is an old ghost town, which you can tour the Bannock State Park with the ghost town in it. It's a two and a half hour drive to get there from Idaho Falls, so we need to hit the road and get going. See you in Bannock. All right, we're somewhere in Montana, still heading on our way up towards Bannock. It's been a long drive so far. We're quite tired. We're just slowing it down a bit because that jet lag is catching up and you don't want to be on the road when you've got that going on in your eyes. This is beautiful. It's freezing cold. I think it's just above uh, two degrees Celsius, around five Celsius. It's quite cold. It's quite windy, but it's beautiful. This scenery is stunning. So Scott's going to take over the driving and I'll do some of the video of the scenery for you um, from here. Thanks to Scott for the video he's done so far. The drive north into Montana was amazing. There was so much beautiful scenery, including more snow-capped mountains, rolling hills, and towering cliffs so high that I could not fly my drone high enough to see above them. Within the hour of entering Montana, we already knew this place would capture our hearts and become one of the best places we'd ever been to. Welcome to Bannock. This is an old gold mining town. It's now a state park. Uh, there are remnants of mining and of um, teepees and stuff like that, so we'll go and have a look around. Bannock is a hauntingly well-preserved ghost town that holds a significant place in Montana's history. It is the site of Montana's initial major gold discovery on July 28, 1862 which ultimately led to Bannock's designation as Montana's first territorial capital in 1864. The gold rush rapidly swelled the town's population to over 3,000 by 1863. However, as the allure of gold faded, so did the town's prosperity. What remains today is Main Street in Bannock, adorned with over 50 enchanting historical structures, each standing as a testament to the town's rich and enduring past. These structures have faithfully weathered the passage of time for approximately 160 years. For those interested in exploring this historic gem, guided tours are available from the Visitor Centre, which is open from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Additionally, Bannock Days, an annual event held on the third weekend in July, offers captivating historical displays and engaging activities for visitors of all ages. As we spent time in Bannock, a snowstorm was brewing in the mountains. We experienced a mix of weather, including snow flurries, rain, sleet, and then relatively fine weather. Overall, it was a very cold experience. So regardless of what time of year you visit Montana, we highly recommend being prepared with winter clothing. Okay, class, has anybody got something they'd like to share for show and tell? Oh, me, me. Oh, Scott, what would you like to share? I saw a woodpecker for the first time today with little red bits on his head. 
Woo! We've never seen woodpecker sequel. Never seen a woodpecker. Awesome as yeah. Howdy, partner. How can I help you? Frontier whiskey, please. Frontier whiskey it is. So I don't know if I've ever told you guys this before, but I'm a historian. That's what I do as a job. And this place is just magical to me. <laughs> Bannock, Montana. I don't, I don't know of a place in Australia that's like this, where all these old original buildings that haven't been moved from somewhere else are still intact and still here for you to walk around and look into. It's not, I mean, I, I think sometimes they have dress up reenactment events here, but it's not like Sovereign Hill where it's all touristy and there's souvenirs and all that sort of stuff going on. This is the genuine real article and they've kept it and you can visit it. I mean, I'm just blown away. I just, and the hills in the background. Gosh, this is something else, isn't it? Gosh. I love Montana. I love Idaho. I love it all. It's all so beautiful. Adding to Bannock's allure, the town has served as a backdrop for various movies and TV series, with recent productions including The Ballad of Lefty Brown and a Yellowstone spin-off series, 1923, featuring Harrison Ford. Haunted house. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in silence. Shh, it's snowing outside. It is, it's snowing outside. If you wish to extend your stay, the campground provides 28 sites, including a charming rental teepee, a hike-in, bike-in campsite, and a group picnic area. After leaving Bannock, we continued toward the Bitterroot Valley, passing through some amazing small towns like Wisdom, where we filled up the car with petrol and took time to appreciate the little town's charm. However, as we headed west from there, the weather worsened until we found ourselves driving through a full-blown Montana snowstorm. At first, we were pelted with horizontal rain and low visibility, then horizontal sleet and freezing temperatures. Until we reached the Lost Trail Pass, where we encountered the best snow. Check it out! It's snowing! We've come to a pass, we're about to enter the Bitterroot Valley and it's snowing!
Green Montana. How's that, Scott? Oh, great. Loving it. Just concentrating on the road now. <laughs> we finally reached the Bitterroot Valley after the weather cleared briefly, and Scott was eager to fly the drone. Drone? What does it go like in rain? It's not raining much. The Bitterroot Valley is a stunning valley carved by the Bitterroot River. While it is famous for numerous reasons, people will know it by John Denver's song, Wild Montana Skies, and the Yellowstone TV series. Despite the weather, we were thrilled to be here. So we're currently driving through the Bitterroot Valley. It is beautiful. We haven't done a lot of filming because it's raining, it's been snowing as we showed you some of the snow at the top of the pass. But it's just been raining a lot since then. We'd love to stop. I'd love to stop and take photos. But it's there are places, it's just bucketing down in places. We're not complaining about that. Like, you know, it, it looks beautiful in the rain. It's just not great for photos. We stopped at the Dutton Ranch quickly. You're not really supposed to take photos there, as you could see in the sign. They've got security out the front. They've got signs and witches hat, no parking, no photos, no drones. So apparently they used to sort of put up with that, but they're not anymore and they may be filming at the moment for the last season. We're heading on into Missoula. We've got about an hour's drive to Missoula. We'll let you know when we get there. This road that we're driving on is notorious in bad weather for being slippery and having some issues. There's usually a lot of animals around as well, deer and elk. So we hope we get to Missoula in one piece, but we're loving the scenery. Sorry we can't show you as much as what we're seeing. We hope you like this episode. The history down at Bannock was fantastic. That is an amazing setup down there. It was great to go up over the pass, seeing the snow, uh, playing in the snow that little bit. It was great. There are a couple of things we didn't get done today just because of the weather, but the snow was really worth it. Um, we've landed in Missoula. We've had a, a big day again. So we will see you in the next episode. Until that time, take care of your mates. <laughs>